Hello, welcome to Norway. Come on, inside. This is Mikael Jorgensen. He is a mental coach working with athletes getting ready for the Olympics. He has also worked with football players' mental health for over 20 years. Often when people come, they have lose their, their, their identity. A lot of players come to me and they are under pressure from the newspaper, from the coaches, from the colleagues. But to develop their and f- refine their identity, that's the key. If you can get out their personality, we will also fulfill their potential. The mental coach's experience is that openness around mental health in football has improved. Premier League examples include Aaron Len and Michael Keane. But over half of Jorgensen's football clients has a particular recurring problem. Too many athletes are putting there, if I perform well, I'm a good person. If I perform bad, I'm a bad person. If you are putting these two together, it's a lot of, uh, lot of fighting for in the match. Let's talk to someone who's played in a European Cup final, captain his national team and been a rock-solid centre-half in the Premier League. People underestimate it. I think it's it's more a mental challenge uh, than anything else. If you can't cope with the, the mental strain, um, you have no chance. In 2017, our study from the Norwegian Players Association showed that 43% of players in Norway's top leagues were struggling with mental health issues. The number doesn't surprise Jorgensen. I think they have been there all the time. But in 2017, 2016, they are, have the bravery to talk about it. One of those who's talked about it the most is Starbeck defender Yao Ile Amangva. He has written several articles about players' mental health and studies to become a mental coach once his football career is over. It's uh, been neglected uh, quite a bit and it doesn't make sense when everyone says it's so important. I've seen so many examples of uh, players um, who, who could have been or done much better but because of psychological factors, they don't really reach the potential. So that's made me realize how important this is. But how important is the mental aspect for the coaches? Players are different. Some need an arm around the shoulder, some need a kick in the bum. But the most important thing before you buy players is to know if they have good mental health. Then you don't need to spend too much time on it. As well, it's important to emphasize that football isn't dangerous. I think there's a lot of hidden potential in the relationship between the coach and athletes. If they don't understand each other, they cannot get the best out of each other. The players are also clear where football has the best chance of improving. When it comes to sports psychology, that's where you can make massive gains. The next shift in football has to be about the mental side. So, after speaking to those working to prevent homophobia in football and players at the highest level about the mental challenges of the beautiful game, one question remains. Is football for all? I think football is for all, but elite football is not for everybody. It's not for all. Because that you shall, if you shall do top sport, elite sport, then you shall uh, like to be out of your comfort zone. I don't think that elite sport is for everybody, but football generally is for all. But elite sport is not. Thanks so much for watching Football for All. If you want to watch extended interviews with Beretta Hangeland, Mikael Jürgensen and the others, head over to my website by clicking the link in the description below.